Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this uh, presentation. Today, so we'd like to explain, introduce uh, some activities about uh, Debian and Yocto. Uh, there are three speakers uh, in this session. Uh, Manuel uh, from uh, Linatronics and Boja uh, from Igbox. And I am Kazuhiro, working in Toshiba Corporation. Uh, we are just working for uh, some activities uh, related to Debian, Yocto, and we are uh, developing a custom Linux environment for the embedded product. So we'd like to introduce our activities today. Uh, first, uh, here is agenda, and uh, first uh, I'd like to explain uh, some background of this presentation. Uh, yeah, we are a product developers and uh, uh, there are many options uh, in the world uh, to uh, create a Linux environment for the embedded product. Uh, uh, and we are, uh, already have uh, individual solution in each company uh, so first, uh, I'd like to introduce such existing approaches. And second, uh, I'd like to show uh, why we are joined and uh, uh, what uh, we are thinking about and uh, what is the common goals or requirements uh, and so on. And it's an open source project, so uh, to collect as many feedback as possible is very important for us. Uh, so that's uh, uh, why uh, we are making this uh, presentation. So first, uh, in product development, uh, we usually define the uh, Linux-based uh, system, but usually it's uh, not enough uh, uh, to achieve the all requirement in the product. Uh, for example, there are many uh, customization uh, required uh, sometimes, and then also uh, we, uh, we need to add uh, some application uh, for each product, and sometimes it proves uh, some third party uh, software dependency. Uh, in, in development, yeah, uh, we usually need to provide uh, ready-to-use image. Uh, for example, uh, only one uh, single uh, binary file, which includes uh, bootloader and kernel and the root file system and so on. Uh, also, the whole development process uh, should be repeat repeatable for the every uh, developers. Uh, in other words, uh, the whole uh, development information, data, uh, need to be kept uh, in the future, uh, for the future. Uh, and the such kind of process, development process, uh, should be uh, uh, very clear for everyone. And of course, we need to uh, yeah, you need to use uh, very stable and maintainable uh, packages existing in the world, uh, and also long term. Uh, maintenance uh, features is very important, especially in uh, the industrial products. And uh, license compliance and, and so on, and many features are required in the product development. So, uh, what uh, do we need to do, uh, actually? Uh, first, uh, at least, we select the appropriate base system, it is, in other words, the Linux distribution and also to provide some kind of tools or some framework to effectively manage the base system. Uh, it sometimes uh, becomes a uh, required build system or framework uh, to customize or maintain, effectively maintain the product resources. Uh, one option is uh, Debian, uh, uh, well now binary distribution. And uh, for, from a long time ago, it supports uh, many multiple CPU architectures uh, and also recently supports, of course, uh, toolchain. 
i nów się e, from schools to Debian stretch and many uh, security updates available and uh, Debian LTS team fortunately support uh, long term uh, maintenance uh, plus two years uh, in total to five years uh, all seven, uh, specific packages uh, uh, supported and uh, many other features uh, available uh, that is useful for the products um, but we need to uh, integrate uh, at least the application or uh, some third-party software into uh, the product uh, uh, into the Debian system uh, when we are creating some products and uh, also need to customize some packages uh, yeah, Debian binary packages is very stable uh, and uh, well tested uh, but sometimes we need to unpack it and change in some configuration or something and also, uh, in the embedded world, we sometimes need to support the very latest uh, SOC, the architecture or something. And Yocto project is uh, uh, very famous in the embedded world uh, today. Uh, it has a very strong uh, integration to BitBake or and uh, uh, it's very, very flexible. Uh, we can modify everything by just modifying the recipes. Uh, and uh, layering function is very useful. Uh, we will uh, explain about it later, right? And SDK, standard SDK generation is also supported. And new architecture uh, usually provided by uh, SOC vendors, uh, meta layers. But uh, sometimes it uh, takes very long time uh, to generate uh, many uh, images and uh, long time support is also required if we apply it to the product development. So uh, I'd like to change the speaker here. Okay, so let me continue. I have a microphone here. Um, thanks. I want to present you the existing projects that are more or less fit into this area. So uh, we have identified three projects that are using some combination of Bitbake and Debian already. And these are Neta Elbe, and which will be presented by me because I'm also the maintainer of this uh, thing. Then we have Ether, and Borsham is the maintainer of Ether. And we have Meta Debian represented by Kazu. So we will give you a quick overview about the three approaches that are already existing. Uh, of course, there are some other projects out there that are using Debian in the embedded world. For example, maybe you have heard the talk yesterday about DevOps. There also is a really huge list uh, of tools on uh, the Debian wiki, like tools like VMD Bootstrap, VMDB2, and there are much more tools for using Debian in an embedded environment and for helping you creating images uh, with Debian. But none of those other projects we identified have uh, some BitBake interface. So let me just explain you uh, about uh, something about Elbe because Elbe is the base system of this Neta Elbe thing. Um, is there anybody in here who has heard something of Elbe before? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> um, so you might know that in Elbe, nearly everything is specified in a single XML file. And uh, this XML file uh, is put into something we call the init VM. And inside the init VM, we have the Elbe daemon. And the Elbe daemon basically uses tools from Debian, like the bootstrap, like Python app, like the pbuilder, to interpret the information from XML and generate the output that can be an image, that can be an SDK. And we also care about uh, providing license information and source files you need to give to the customer. So, Recently, we added into the testing version also some kind of variant management that you can build different variants that are mentioned in the XML file. But a lot of people uh, are, fa uh, are familiar with the BitBake tool. And so we decided to also provide 
uh, BitBake interface for Neta, uh, for Elbe, and this one is called Neta Elbe. The important thing, what you need to understand if you use this, basically all the things we have there in the layers and what BitBake is actually doing is just parsing the config files uh, from the different BitBake layers and combining down the information and generate a LBXML file. And then we just trigger LB builds and LBP builder runs and any VM creation and so on from BitBake. So basically it's just a wrapper around LB, nothing more. So then we thought about, yeah, what can be improved and uh, there are some reasons for us to, to have a better system. And one is if we think about bootstrapping new architectures because there are people who, do, who have an architecture that is currently not supported by Debian. And um, therefore BitBake would be also maybe a nice option to produce a new glibc, a new gcc for, for a new architecture or with newer versions. Also another thing is we use either binary packages or we build them natively in a QEMU emulated pbuilder and this building is very slow and what we'd like to support is cross-building packages and that's also a reason why we'd like uh, to join the ED project. Um, so that's from my side. Um, I hand over to Borsham who will present you Ezer now. Yeah, thank you, Manuel. Uh, so Ezer is um, a package builder and an image generator. Uh, what we do is basically the same steps uh, like install based system, take our product own applications, build them um, in a Debian way from source code, um, ideally Debianized, um, and also our customizations and put this all together in the um, installed base system and create a one uh, ready to use image out of that. Um, Ezer um, took the path of being, um, let's say, almost pure Debian based. This means that we use Debian binary packages um, as a base system. We use um, Debian tools like uh, DPKG build package, RepRepro, apt, debootstrap um, to do all the internal stuff uh, for building packages and managing app repositories, managing dependencies and um, creating the um, root file system. And we use BitBake um, as an efficient uh, package build dispatcher um, so that packages um, are built um, according to their dependencies um, in parallel or um, in the right order. Um, important thing is um, Yocta-like layering um, to ensure the right workflow uh, between hardware vendors, middleware suppliers, and uh, the end uh, application developer. So uh, if you are interested, we have a live demo today evening at the technical showcase. So here you can see uh, the basic structure of uh, Ezer. Um, Ezer itself is a thin, small layer that uh, orchestrates the building of packages and uh, packaging uh, the root file system and so on. Um, on the top of that, you can have some BSP or corporate layers uh, with uh, other software and product layers uh, that have uh, product-specific applications. Uh, for developers, um, you can generate SDK. Um, one can easily patch upstream Debian packages um, without having to fork them. Um, from the beginning, um, uh, it, it was a requirement uh, for Ezer to support variants. This means that um, uh, one product uh, may be um, consisting of several boards and uh, uh, different applications so that uh, like 80% of the code is shared uh, between the boards 
and um, this is efficiently supported uh, via um, recipes and their dependencies. So why um, do we want uh, to go further? Um, we would like to keep the right mix uh, of the tools uh, and at the same time uh, we would like to avoid reinventing the wheel. So there are many tools around and we would like to join forces and uh, achieve more together. Also, um, we would like to improve the implementation um, if we can solve um, some tasks uh, in upstream. Um, the third approach uh, by Toshiba is called MetaDebian and uh, it it is a, a metadata set for um, Yocto project um, for building Debian source code. This means uh, um, Debian source packages um, are integrated into the um, Yocto uh, layer and then built by Yocto means. And also um, Yocto cross-compiler and uh, image generation um, tools are used. Uh, in a difference uh, to the previous approaches, um, this one is a distribution. Uh, this means that the packages are uh, included with the meta itself. Um, and it is source-based uh, like Yocto. It means that uh, we want to cross-build everything from scratch um, to achieve customizability and uh, to uh, be able to use this system for the latest CPUs with uh, our desired tunings and so on. Um, the motivation um, to work on, on the next generation uh, build system is uh, to reduce uh, build times by reusing binaries and also um, to reuse Debian packaging uh, to avoid copying uh, the um, Debian rules into Yocto recipes. So here you um, have the uh, comparison with the green. Uh, you see some uh, common features of each tool. Um, and uh, yeah, so this, this project worked today. And our goal is to create the, to reboot the whole thing and to create the next generation um, project with our shared goals. Uh, for that, we would like to define these goals, what we would um, like to achieve here. So first, uh, we would like to name the thing somehow. Um, so one obvious thing is uh, to uh, combine uh, the first letters of uh, our projects uh, to aid, um, and we pronounce it as aid uh, in hope that it helps uh, us and others. So um, what I personally like um, about the Yocto project is the ease of use. So we have one command building with Bitbake and this is the only thing that uh, the developer who uh, has his first day uh, working on this project has to know. Um, this is very important that all the details uh, are uh, hidden in the first uh, stage uh, till you need them. Uh, but after you uh, need to do some more complex stuff uh, like adding new applications, adding dependencies between them, adding layers, um, etc., cetera, um, you will uh, discover uh, the uh, recipe structure, dependency structure, and so on. These use cases have to be covered in a scalable way. Um, this is well done um, in recipes and uh, dependencies between them. It should be easy to customize. Um, this also we uh, know from the Yocta project uh, because uh, each recipe is uh, responsible for its respective area um, and uh, by customizing um, the respective part you can get the customization you want. Uh, important uh, thing is 
tooling uh, we would like to use existing tools uh, because Debian um, is about tools and uh, we want to use uh, them as much as possible. So we would like to prefer existing tools um, uh, over uh, rather than developing our own tool sets for that. Um, and uh, use those tools also not as a fork, but uh, by properly wrapping, connecting, or enhancing them upstream. Um, and if needed, uh, then contribute to upstream projects. Uh, during that, we would like, of course, to have clean, minimal, manageable uh, architecture of the whole. Regarding build targets, well, this is um, a floating target, but of course the obvious things uh, are like build uh, Debianized or non-Debianized sources, um, generate ready-to-use images and generate SDK. Uh, maybe there are further topics like uh, provide um, app repositories, but uh, this is currently out of scope. Uh, maybe, um, yeah, regarding performance. Uh, mm -hmm. Performance uh, is one of the last uh, topics, uh, but uh, nonetheless quite important. So we would like to avoid uh, rebuilding um, stuff every time um, and reuse binary packages uh, also from Debian and from our own um, building. Um, of course, uh, there is much uh, QA that flows uh, into the Debian um, binary packages, and uh, this is what we would like to use. Um, however, um, we would also like to use cross-building because in our experience it's uh, faster than um, native building on native hardware or um, QEMO and avoid uh, unnecessary stuff uh, or parallelization blockers um, that um, would slow down the whole thing. And uh, also, of course, this is a um, product-oriented framework. This means we want to keep um, the reproducibility features um, of um, our projects. Uh, and have uh, metadata layering for collaboration. So here we have an example how this could look like. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Yocto, um, this is quite obvious. So at the bottom we have uh, meta8, and uh, then we have uh, some layers for a company, for uh, projects and boards, uh, with the difference that these recipes uh, do not control, uh, they do not have the usual do, build, do, install um, tasks um, that do the actual thing, but they uh, inherit from one, um, let's say, Debian DPKG class that uh, builds the whole thing uh, using Debian tools in Debian way. Uh, there are some nice to have things. Uh, uh, we personally find uh, bootstrapping Debian um, a very cool thing, and uh, it would also be uh, useful for us if we had it um, for tuning for specific CPUs, or for example, um, one case where we needed to rebuild the whole project uh, back in um, all the times when uh, Debian was built without stack protection. We um, wanted to rebuild the whole thing with stack protection, and here where uh, this would be useful if we could define like project-wide uh, extra C flags. Last but not least uh, is uh, footprint uh, is all kind of lower priority uh, for us. But uh, yeah, if we uh, could provide this, it would be also nice. So um, I'd like uh, to pass over to Kazu for current development. Yep. Uh, from this slide, uh, I'd like to explain some technical parts. Uh, uh, we already defined some common visions, so uh, it's time to define some use cases for our tools. And so there are actually five uh, main use cases here. And uh, first one is to rebuild the existing Debian sources uh, by just typing the big bake hello command. Uh, this is uh, yeah example for the hello package. 
which is included in Debian official packages. And the uh, second one is to build a Debianized source. Debianized means uh, the source, source tree uh, which includes some Debian uh, metadata. Uh, in this case, uh, we can also uh, need to uh, build uh, the binary packages by just typing the big bake, for example, uh, app1. And the third one is to build a non debianized source, uh, which is uh, uh, the normal case in your project, maybe. And, but in such case, we also want to build the uh, application which don't, uh, uh, which is not uh, Debianized or just uh, uh, building the bootloaders or kernels or something. And then uh, generate the root of our system or SDK by, it is also should be done by one command, uh, like a Debian, a big, big Debian image. Uh, which uh, pulls, uh, which is all required binary packages uh, and generates a root final, a root of our system or SDK images. And to achieve that, uh, uh, we need to implement at least uh, the functions listed here. Uh, first one is the fit, uh, source features. Uh, in our case, uh, we usually use the Debian source packages for the building, so it's important to improve the, some fetch function, feature function uh, for the Debian source packages like the DSC. And other important things is uh, how to solve the dependencies. Uh, actually, uh, all, most uh, dependencies should, uh, can be solved with apt, uh, which is uh, the uh, same way as uh, Debian world. But actually, uh, we have uh, non-Debian as sourced, uh, and we need to implement a recipe for that. Uh, in such case, uh, the big bay dependency mechanism help it. Uh, and then uh, we need to use uh, the both uh, dependency resolution at the same time without uh, the any duplication. And of course, the package builder is uh, required, and we need to use the uh, uh, same uh, build, uh, package builder as the Debian official way, uh, which is SBuild. And also need to need to implement some builder for the non Debianized sources. Uh, in such case, we need to uh, put the source into the Debian change root and use uh, Debian tool chain and build it. Uh, the finally, the required thing is uh, image generator, which is currently based on the debug drop, and uh, we also have some possibilities to corroborate uh, existing. Uh, tools uh, in at least uh, in Debian community, there are many image generation tools available. So we are also looking for uh, some chance to collaborate uh, in such existing project. This is uh, uh, a simple workflow of the current approach. Um, first, uh, we need uh, there is a feature which just uh, download. Uh, the source Debian source packages or as extra uh, source code like bootloader can and an application uh, and this uh, blue area is the Debianized world and the green area is the non-Debianized world. Uh, uh, in the Debianized world, uh, all source code can be uh, built with SBuild, uh, which is the uh, official uh, build process uh, in the Debian uh, infrastructure, and then we can get the generate, uh, we can get the binary packages, uh, which is stored in the app repository. Then, uh, in non-Debianized world, there are two options. Uh, one of them, uh, if the source code is very simple, uh, we can sometimes. Uh, uh, Debianized uh, the existing source, uh, and after uh, process is completely same as the existing Debian. Uh, sorry, uh, completely same as the process uh, to build the existing uh, Debian source package. Another way is to build 
uh, with uh, some low build uh, in the exchange route uh, provided by S build and uh, use the uh, Debian uh, toolchain and generate just the binaries, then packages to uh, the app to repository. Finally, the uh, generate the root file system or SDK by image builder. Uh, currently, uh, we as a features uh, colored, uh, red colored things is available in the, our prototype. Uh, uh, one of them is building the Debianized sources and also uh, Debianizing and building with this build some sample application. We can, uh, you can easily find some implementation in uh, by checking uh, the GitHub repositories. Uh, here is one example to rebuild the Debian source packages. Uh, this is very simple, only three lines required to build the uh, Hello source packages. So actually, we need to define only uh, DSC URI, uh, which uh, specify uh, some uh, URI to the DSC file. And uh, after we inherit the Debian DSC, uh, all required source package files uh, listed in DSC automatically fetched by the system, and uh, every build uh, is done by S build by just inheriting. Uh, the S-Build class. This is another example to build the non-Debianized package. Uh, it is also not so complicated. Uh, one, the first line means uh, just uh, to Debianize the, the, this uh, source code and put it to uh, the build flow uh, that is same as the previous one. Then. The interesting part is the bottom three lines. Uh, it depends on uh, some application who currently depends on uh, three packages, uh, build dependency and runtime dependencies. Uh, uh, if uh, it depends on uh, some other recipes, uh, we can just define the depends uh, to, for example, parts. Uh, this is the same. Uh, approach uh, with the Yoke project, but uh, if uh, uh, the package uh, depends on some binary packages already exist in uh, Debian world, uh, you can define, uh, you can create the dependencies by just uh, defining the dev depends and all depends. Uh, Regarding the build dependencies, uh, the both of the depends and the dev depends here uh, finally go into the build depends of the source package. Yep. So the last part uh, will be done with by Manuel. Okay. So let me summarize up what we've learned about the last uh, two years we are working together, I think. So uh, we definitely learned that we can build SDK and root file systems um, with our uh, combination of Bitbake and Debian. Um, we thinking about evaluating more tools for doing the actual image generation if you want to go the Yocto way or Debian way or maybe provide uh, several options for doing this. Then uh, another thing we need to solve is the app repository management. Currently we put all packages that are built into one app repository, but of course we uh, need a, an easy way to define which packages should be used from a binary repository and which packages should be rebuilt from source each time. So this is another thing we need to think about and introduce a solution. Then uh, it's about raw building of non-Debianized sources. Um, it's often preferred for your own application that you don't want to Debianize it, just to, to build if it within a build system. And therefore we did this prototype of Debianizing automatically simple applications. Um, but of course for complex applications that doesn't work at the moment. Um, 
we need to think about do we want to support something like Bitbake does actually um, for building them or improve the Debianizer or, or what way we want to go there. Then you'd like to customize, often you like to customize some packages and also therefore we need to specify a workflow especially for customizing currently existing packages in Debian for building them for example other configure options or something like that. Then we use currently a QEMU emulated build for um, doing the actual package build and therefore we'd like to dig into uh, Debian multilib and S build supporting cross tool chains that we can use a cross tool trial in, inside S build to have a native compiler in there. Another thing we, we need to look at is reproducibility and all the management of the metadata and so on. So um, what are, is our conclusion of our work together? So, um, it is possible to, to do it the way we think uh, it should work. Uh, we learned that we want to rely on Debian's infrastructure tools, on Debian cross-building features, and that we don't want to reinvent the wheel by our own. Um, we hadn't have even an idea that it might, should be possible to build Debian source packages without even having any bit bake receipt in the file system so that we can seed the information from the apt cache directly into bit bake. Um, we have a proof of concept uh, code available on GitHub. I show you on the next slide. And there we worked uh, heavily on the dependency resolution problem over the last couple of months. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, we also learned that we often have to support uh, the same thing in a different way because some people don't want to cross build. They always want to do the native build because they have so complex applications where they say, I don't like to improve the build system that it supports cross building. Others say, I need cross building because of speed. So we learned that we uh, uh, need to implement sometimes two ways to do the same thing because the people have uh, different estimations on the, on the process. Another thing we realized there are many projects out there uh, with very similar goals and of course we are open so we want to welcome you to join us. So we just created a GitHub uh, organization called the AED Project where we host our prototype or the proof of concept uh, code. Uh, we also want to use GitHub to track the issues and we implemented some Travis-based testing that we can, uh, that you can also easily use to see what is working at the moment already. Um, then we have created a mailing list um, where you are invited to join us where we want to have technical, the technical discussions and where we do the review of patches. Um, so for bug reports, please use the issue track on GitHub. For sending us patches, please post them on the mailing list if you want to, to join. Um, we are here for today and tomorrow uh, and we are happy to talk to anyone who is interesting. Um, yeah, and now we have time for one last question, I think. <laughs> is there any? It's not quite a question, just to say that you mean multi arch and multi lib they're different, and bad to start off with the wrong terminology. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm glad to see somebody's using it, right. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Yes. So I have a, a working job to build. Uh, if I 
of course, I, I don't have the time to uh, uh, put it completely to something new, but uh, if I ha happen to have a package that doesn't, isn't, is now in New York, there's no suitable Yocter layer available, could I easily use uh, the Debian package and your two classes you showed there, and would that integrate, or is that something that would require more work? Mm, I think it's basically not possible because you're using completely different versions of the of the glibc of the compilers and so on. You have different dependencies because Bitbake names sometimes packages with other names than they have in Debian. So this would be really, really a hard task. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Should we finish? Yep. Okay. So thank you for your intention. Um, as I told, we are open for questions uh, here and there. And on the technical uh, showcase of Washington, you can ask questions about ESA. Thank you very much. Thank you.